Shalom Chavim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live yet again, looking at another pr- prophetic segment tonight, looking at those things that we have missed as, uh, as a Jewish people, the house of Judah, that is, the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of Judah, and of course the Levites, the priests that were still present in Israel uh, during the time of the the, the destruction of the temple in 70 AD by Titus, the Roman general that drove the Jews to all the four corners of the earth there. The house of Israel, of course, going into exile 780 years before that time, uh, when the Babylonians conquered them, they were actually the, Assyri- the Syrians conquered them and caused them to go into exile as well. Very troubling uh, history for the Jewish people. And yet tonight we're gonna be looking at <clears throat> some of the mistakes that we have made also, those mistakes that point directly to the coming of the Messiah. So I can't wait to get into this broadcast tonight with you. Not as lengthy of a broadcast, pretty short here, about 20, 25 minutes. So please stay with us here. Visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. We do need your support in what we're doing. And we thank you for being a part of getting the gospel of Jesus Christ to our Jewish brothers and sisters and helping open the eyes of the rabbinical community because the rabbinical community is really key to what we're talking about. And I want to share something with you too. Rabbi Winston, Rabbi Tovia Singer, both of these men have taught right from the very messages that you're listening to here on Israeli News Live. They have taught the part about Rome's involvement uh, with the cup uh, that is that the Pope of Rome came there and fulfilled the prophecy of Obadiah. Do you know both these men have taught this? Both these men know us. They know us here at Israeli News Live. Fr- Tovia Singer is on our f- friends on Facebook. I've spoke with Tovia several times before, sending these information here. Rabbi Winston as well also has contacted me. We've, we've c- communicated on Facebook before, and he as well has even written about these insights that God has given me openly to the Jewish community, but they always fall short of being able to tell you the rest of the story about the Messiah. Well, tonight is a new one, and it's another insight to clearly identify Yeshua as being the Mashiach in the day that was 2,000 years ago before the destruction of the second temple. Let's get right into it. Ezekiel chapter 34. We spoke about it last night, but I didn't tell you the key in there. That's what I forgot to tell you, but I'm going to tell you tonight. All right, so we see here, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Even to the shepherds, thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the shepherds of Israel that have fed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the sheep? You did eat the fat. You clothed you with the wool. You killed the the, the, the fatlings. You fed not the sheep. All right, that's kind of a twofold purpose. He's literally talking in the natural, but it's also a spiritual application as well. The weak have you not strengthened, neither have you healed that which was sick, neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought back that which was driven away, neither have you sought that which was lost, but with force have you ruled over them with rigor. So they scattered because there was no shepherd. They became food to all the beasts of the field and were scattered. My sheep wander through all the mountains and and upon every hill, yea, upon all the face of the earth, were my sheep scattered, and there was none that did search or seek. Uh, Friends, don't you realize, I mean, he's talking to the Levitical community, and Levites were living in all 12 tribes of Israel, in every land they were living, supposed to be shepherding the people. But instead, you were just killing the sacrifices and getting fat off of it. And when the house of Israel went into exile, you didn't bother to go look for them. You just let them go. Oh, Judea, the house of Judah expanded their territory a little bit. But you let them go. Shame on Israel for this. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely for as much as my sheep became a prey, and my sheep became food to all the beasts of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my sheep, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my sheep, Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Ka'omer Adonai Hua. 
Hineni el charaim. I am against the shepherds, and I will require my sheep at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding the sheep. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore, and I will deliver my sheep from their mouth, and they may not be food for them. Do you know that that was fulfilled by Jesus Christ of Nazareth? That very passage right there. And I will deliver my sheep from their mouth, that they may not be for food for them. Because the natural types the spiritual. You want me to show you where it was? In the book of John. In the book of John, in chapter 2, it reads this, And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers of money, and overthrew the tables. And he said unto them, that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house an house of merchandise. He drove out the sheep. He drove them out. So you could what? So you could not eat them anymore. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves anymore. And I will deliver my sheep from their mouth that they may not be food for them. Now that's a personal pronoun, by the way, in case you, you've not noticed uh, here, here recently. <laughs> Unreal. God himself is going to come down and deliver the sheep out of their, out of their mouths. And Jesus Christ did exactly that. No time in biblical history was there ever a time where the temple, both first and second temple, that was fulfilled that God came down and drove the sheep and the oxen and all those that were, they were selling there at the temple and drove them out of the temple until Jesus of Nazareth showed up. Another prophecy that let you know the Mashiach. Now it's not actually saying the Mashiach right here, but he says right here, shepherds feed themselves anymore. I, I will deliver my sheep. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. I will deliver my sheep from their mouth that they may not be food for them anymore. And then Jesus comes and does that. Not only did Jesus come and drive them out, as John says, but notice what else he said. Because what was God getting on to them about? You haven't even gone and looked for the sheep. That's the spiritual application. The children of Israel that had gone into captivity. You know, 780 years your people are in captivity and you don't go look for them? And the only reason they went into captivity is because the Levites refused to speak the true word of God. Instead, just getting fat off the sheep. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Why? Because you wouldn't do it. How think ye if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be go astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains and seeketh that which has gone astray? If so, be that he find it. Verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more for that sheep than the ninety and nine which he went not astray. Which went not astray. And here we are, a modern state of Israel today. And I know there's a lot of people that have a contention. All oh, these are not the real Jews. There, well, then God's a liar and can't keep His word. You know, I'm not here to play games with you. You think a person's not a Jew because of the color of their skin. My gosh, why do you think that uh, Joseph had a coat of many colors? Look at all the times of the intermarriage amongst the, uh, of the Jewish people or the, of the Hebrews and the, uh, the Israelites down through their history. Different nations, all different colors. Esau, you know that he was red and hairy. Skin a reddish color and he was a hair, hair, red hair and stuff like that. What, do you think his twin brother looked something different? You know, and I realize there's black Jews, white Jews, brown Jews, yellow Jews, because we have intermingled. We have been nearly 3,000 years away from our homeland, friends, especially the house of Israel. 
And the changes have happened over time. But Jesus said he goes after those lost sheep even if it's only one. And yet Israel is in their homeland today. And what have you done to bring the house of Israel home? Nothing. Oh, you bicker and fuss over, you got to keep this law or that law, and whether it's your mother is a Jew or not. God didn't ask you if it was your mother was a Jew. Look at your example. I just show you the scripture a moment ago that Jesus Christ fulfilled the scripture of Ezekiel 34, verse 10. And yet there's hundreds of them he fulfilled. And you're sitting there bickering over this and bickering over that. Well, you know, they, they, this is a Jewish state. No, it's a state of Israel. And in fact, the three tribes that are there now, the Levites, the, some, uh, the, the, the Benjamites, and the Judites, you don't even have a right to half the land in there that you're claiming that you got a right to. Bring the house of Israel home, the other ten tribes, and then put yourselves in the right tribal order. And yet Ezekiel condemned Israel for failing to do that. Jesus, he's not really condemning you, but he's saying, why don't you go after that one lost sheep if just one of the sheep were lost? But you won't even do that. Why? You're too busy feeding yourself. Instead of being concerned about all 12 tribes and not worrying about your ideology of what they ought to believe, or whether or not it's their mama is Jewish or not. Jesus took the little woman at the well. She was a Samaritan, which Jews had nothing to do with Samaritans. Why? They were women that had been raped by the Syrians and had children by them. But they shouldn't have been outcasts. Did you forget your mothers of, of Israel were all Syrians? Did you forget Leah, Zilpa, Rachel, and uh, Bila all are Syrians? Did you forget as a man sent me a message on Twitter? God bless his heart. He reminded me of the scripture in Deuteronomy. I think it's chapter 20. I think I wrote it down. Let's see here. Yes, Deuteronomy chapter 26. It's actually verse 5. He said he thought it was verse 6. Verse 5. Our father was a Syrian. He went down into Egypt. Jeez. I mean, what are we missing? What are we missing, friends? Instead, we're too caught up in destroying all the nations around us. You know, keep the word of God. Look for the Mashiach and keep his word. Treat your neighbor as yourself. Then you won't have all these problems. But instead, there's somebody else got their hand in the kettle because you know why? You try to say that Jesus wasn't the Messiah because he didn't deliver you from the hand of the Romans. Jesus knew he wouldn't deliver you from the hand of the Romans at that time. That's why you have Rome back in control in Israel once again. That's why Shimon Peres made a covenant with the Vatican while they had the Oslo Accords going on. He made a covenant with the Vatican. You don't believe that? John Kerry's nine-month negotiation, Rebecca's very prophecy, when God says to Rebecca, there are two nations in your womb. And when they come forth, when they come forth, they would be two, two manners of peoples, two nations. All right, John Kerry did a nine-month negotiation. When nothing happened between the Palestinians and the, the Israelis, they said, well, the negotiations failed. No, it didn't. The Pope of Rome was right on time. Within less than 30 days after that nine-month negotiations was concluded, the Pope of Rome came in, held a communion in the uh, upper room there above King David's tomb, and of course fulfilled the prophecy of Obadiah chapter 1 verse 16 when it says, and they shall drink upon the, uh, God's holy mountain right there, in the masculine plural, men only attending it. Jeez. Let me show you something out here in Hosea. When I would heal Israel, then the iniquity of Ephraim uncovered and the wickedness of Samaria, for they committed falsehood and the thief entered in and the troop of robbers maketh a raid, a raid without. You know why he says, when I would heal Israel, then is the iniquity of Ephraim uncovered? That was because why? We found out that there were a lot of Syrians that we're believing that Jesus Christ is Messiah. All right, now let me remind you so you know what does it say in Isaiah 17 about the, the destruction of Damascus? All right, 
It also says in verse 3, the fortress shall also cease from Ephraim and the kingdom from Damascus. Why? You topple Bashar al-Assad, the one king that has tolerated the Christian community living in Syria, and that's the oldest Christian community in the world. And those Syrians were half Syrian, half house of Israel. Remember, they were taken into bondage there. So Ephraim ended up in Damascus as well. Not just the United States, not just Europe, not just Great Britain, but also there. And a remnant has always been in Syria to this day. And so they have always been able to live there in relative peace as a Christian, as the oldest Christian community in the world. But you know what? God would have healed all of Israel, not just the house of Israel, but all Israel. But what happened? We find out that what I would, when I would heal Israel, then is the iniquity of Ephraim discovered. What iniquity? Idolatry. He got involved with Esau. They built the Roman Catholic Church in 325 AD and started idolatry. And then we see the prophecy that I was sharing with you guys just the other day. Um, and no, this is just, just to confirm to you that the Syrians were believing Jesus. This over here in Matthew chapter 4, verse 24. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all the sick people that were taken with divers diseases, torments, and those which were possessed with the devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. You mean to tell me? Don't forget, because Jesus said, go only into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. There they are. There they are. And yet we got people out there, Jews that are supposed to be for Jesus, telling you to go bomb Syria. You know what? Why you know, that's like saying to your neighbor, you know, you know, you, you know, tell him, go burn his mother's house down or something. You know how stupid that is? You know why they talk like that? Because they don't know God's word. Sure, Damascus will fall. We know that. And God says to write in the very same chapter, because you were not mindful of your rock. You're not mindful that Christ Jesus is the Messiah. Why? Because you got involved in idolatry. Just like over here in Genesis 41. And it came to pass in the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river the seven kind, right? And you go down, and what do we find out? His, his servant... Then spoke the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I mentioned my fault this day. Two years after he left Joseph down in a dungeon to rot, the greatest miracle of this man's life. Don't tell me he didn't know. This man has a dream that tells him that he's been in prison for this whole season now. He has a dream that he's going to get to go out and Joseph interprets it. It happens exactly that way. He sees the butler hung out there. You know, he's just afraid to tell, tell Pharaoh about that. You know, but what did he do? He leaves Joseph there in the prison for two more years. Now, I realize everything has God's hand. Everything is God's time. And I realize it had to be that for a reason. But it also foreshadows exactly what the church would do. Just like God said about Ephraim. He would have, it was, he would have healed Israel, but idolatry was found in Ephraim. He got tied up with Esau's children, and they went up there and made the Catholic Church, and they brought a bunch of idolatry into Christianity. Sure he did. Oh, but don't worry, the butler is still up there serving Pharaoh his, to his sun god. You know, the, the Egyptians worship the sun god. And the Vatican uses that little round sun god disc there, and they put it, they put their, their, their as they call it, their Eucharist, and they put it inside this big golden thing there of the sun god. It ain't changed none. Because they're too busy in idolatry and have forgotten Christ who they left in the dungeon. Maybe they ought to get on those, in those catacombs and read some of those books that they've kept in there. Maybe some of them are in there about from the apostles. You don't want nobody to know, do you? 
Well, as long as you get a million more, that's all right. Keep serving that way for bread to everybody and everybody will believe it. While Christ rots in the dungeon. But I am thankful of the fact that finally the chief butler does say, Oh, I make mention of my fault this day. Oh, so sorry, Pharaoh. There's a guy down in your dungeon that can interpret dreams. Christ can tell you the truth. This is why God says he'll send two witnesses. This is why Jesus said, when they asked him in the scripture, they said, but doesn't, Eli doesn't the scripture say Elias must first come? And Jesus said, truly he shall first come and restore all things. Why? Because Rome left Jesus in a dungeon. So therefore you can't get the interpretation of Pharaoh's dreams. And this is why you don't know the truth of God's word. This is why Israel doesn't know all the places that Christ has hid inside of his word. Because you've kept him bound in a dungeon. The very man that can reveal those things hidden in God's word. Oh my gosh. Let me tell you something. But he said Elijah would come and Elijah would restore all things. And I'm telling you, friends, Elijah hasn't got here yet. I know there's some that believe he has. And God bless you. I'm not against you. But I will tell you, Elijah will come to Israel as Jesus has promised he would. And he will restore all things. You don't think he won't? He also won't put women down either. He won't say she's less. He'll fix these problems. This is the life that Jesus lived. And Jesus, like Joseph, was gifted. He knew the interpretation. He knew what the dreams meant. We're living in that day. My rabbinical friends, I challenge you. I have done many, many videos on these things here. And I'm working on trying to do many of them over again with even new insights continually because you know why the Lord reveals these things to me almost on a daily basis. I just never find the time to put it out in a video. But I think it's time for you to hear. And my friends that are listening here, I do need your help in making sure they hear. We're getting ready here in, a, in just any day now to buy our tickets to go back to Europe. I still have to make sure Yana gets her treatment. And I know so many of you have been so kind to help her in that endeavor as well. We're afraid, though, that she's going to have to have surgery. But we still have to continue that treatment for at least another six months. If she does surgery, it's definitely got to go another six months after that. But we have that. We have the protocols already been signed by the doctors here to take with us. But we're also looking to return back home to Israel as well. And these are the words that we want to take to our brothers. I want to put some of this on video as well, DVD even for them. You pray for us, please. Keep us in your prayers. Keep my wife in your prayers as well. She is doing better. I know many of you are always asking me, how is she doing? She is doing better, but we still have some very serious obstacles. Besides the tumor that was there on one of her ovaries there, she also has one on her liver as well. So we do ask for you to be praying for her. And we love you guys tremendously. And if you want to support the work that we're doing here, visit our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. And you can donate there online. You can donate as well here to us here, whether it be here or in Europe, either place. You can, you can whichever is easier for you to mail, the Noon Institute. And that here is 8297 Champions Gate, number 442. That's a pound sign, 442, Champions Gate, Florida, 33896. In the Czech Republic, the same way, Danun Institute, P.O. Box 46, 150, a little space, 06, Praha, 56, Czech Republic. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And please share this video everywhere you can. You'll be surprised. We're reaching. We're reaching the rabbinical community. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live and the Noon Institute, Arab Talk.